This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show, we're back, baby. What? <coughs> Excuse me. What's up, bro? <coughs> Jesus Christ, bro! What the? I mean, you start. I know. I know. You start the show. You start the show, and uh, it's, it's a twelve <laughs> second. <laughs> Jesus, bro! What a napkin! I know. I know. What the? I know. <laughs> All right, I got a whole new setup here, bro. I'm trying to keep pace with the spaceship you're designing. <laughs> All right, no, here we go. I, Sorry about the call. I, no, I, I was going to say, before we even got on the air, you were saying, oh, I got the black backdrop, I got a new desk, and what, right. I get no kudos? I was going to save it for the cast. As you well know, I mean, we've hung out this whole weekend, so I we needed something to You're save right. for the cast. So uh, why don't you clue in the listeners on what the hell you got okay. going on over there? Let me uh, just, hold on, i got to save you out here. Okay. All right, bro. So Patrick got me a couple of these foam squares. He got me like one box of them. He said it'll help with sound. So I said, what if I did the whole room? And he goes, yeah, that'd be even better. So I bought a bunch of boxes and you got to put four stickers on them and their panels. And Sadie was helping me. And I got, now I got it. I got over here. You can't see the left. I have actual closet doors and those are getting padded next. And now Jackie's like, now you got to keep this thing closed all the time. I don't want people to come up and see all this foam shit. But the sound is amazing. Then I didn't like my desk. I went in my basement, found the smaller desk, spray painted it black, drilled a hole in it to put my uh, mic in. And I am just, I got new towers so I get better internet. Bro, I am ready to cast with you for years to come, guy. What's up? What are you doing? Red sweats right now? It was great to hang out with you. All right. You, you need to come down. <laughs> After all that, you need to come down three inches. All right. There we go. How's that? Uh, beautiful. Okay. And, and just just uh, as, as a sidebar here, Patrick, is his internet worse than it was before i i think the i think the panels are affecting the internet signal <laughs> oh shit i didn't think of that <laughs> no 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 it's all right we're, we're, <laughs> we're don't lean too we're far good. forward that fucks up the internet when you lean forward <laughs> all right i think we're good no i really i think we're good i'm getting two more towers bro forget it all right Great. It looks good. It looks great. We're black on black. Uh, you got gray on. I got a darker gray on. I think we're kind of in uniform right now with the show. Uh, let's dive into this weekend. Uh, we're coming off a weekend in Poughkeepsie together. Pete, uh, if you were at the show, uh, you know already. If you weren't, uh, Pete and I performed at the Poughkeepsie, did six shows. Uh, and you, we talked about a lot, right? Yeah. And yeah. we never get together and like get caught up because we normally do that on the cast and we don't like to catch up because a lot of that stuff we talk about on the cast and we need a, a kind of like an original reaction to it. So we Couldn't don't agree like to more. hash Couldn't it. Agree. Yeah. We don't like to hash it twice, but <clears throat> I'd like to start off the show by uh diving into your experience you said you had some things with the hotel this that and the other thing that you wanted to kind of get into on the cast uh oh i wanted to ask you if this was if you would consider this embarrassing right so i'm i go to the hotel and i i figured i figured it'd be nice if you're staying there so i look it up and it's a Marriott Autograph Hotel. So I'm kind of like, all right, maybe that's, you know, the best they got to offer around there. So I pull up and it's valet, right? So when I see this is the thing. When I, when it's valet, I'm not ready for valet guy. I mean, I, I again, I don't want to get too crass, but it was a six hour drive. We've discussed what I do on long drives. <laughs> that's on the floor. On the passenger side, I'm going to have a guy get in with fucking leather gloves and see my piss cup. I mean, are you kidding me? So, so. Hold on, bro, wait, 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 wait. 
I oh, got, I got an apple oh, pie oh, box from McDonald's. I am. I'm doing a quick slide by. You either know from the cast what I'm talking about. We're not gonna. We know what was going on there. It gets tacky. No, no. I. You're gonna pull up the valet with piss in the car. Listen, I didn't know it was valet. Okay, what I was gonna do was go down into your garage and dump it in a drain in the parking lot and then put it in the back of the car. That's what I was gonna do. And it was only a little because it only happened. There was only a little bump of the bumper where it got iffy. I'm bro. I, I tell you, though, I'm trying to get over to GW towards uh, where I got to go. And it's bumper to bumper. And I, I do a like just a little sit up and I put it there and I put a sweatshirt over me. It looks like, a, you know, like a little. And even if you're coming by in a semi, you have no idea what I'm doing. But I'm looking around. Bumper to bumper cars everywhere. Am I the only one with this problem on the whole bridge? Seriously, I mean, no one else is sitting there and I mean, no one traffic is not moving and you got to take a leak. You don't get nervous. Like, what? what how's this going to what, what, what are we going to do here? I don't know. Well, I don't this bears the this bears the question. When you're stuck in traffic, are you looking around a lot at other people in their cars to even see what they're doing? Because I think in my lifetime, I've never really looked over at anybody and said the hell are they doing i don't think i even look at other drivers do you once in a while i'll do a little voyeurism i look but it's when you get caught looking like i'll look at someone passing me and let me do the quick look at you and now oh so embarrassing when someone knows you were looking at them so embarrassing because they're better than you right away they're like you're so unimportant i wasn't fucking (laughs) looking at you why are you looking at me because I'm better than you and you knew it when I was driving by. You sense it. Yeah. Okay. My, my second question is <clears throat> how long are you driving with piss in the car? Oh, always. Like, usually what I usually do is uh, I do a, a d- immediate dump if I can. I, again, I don't like to hop on this. Like if, uh, you know, but it, when you're in bumper to bump, there's too many people around. So the very yeah. next stop, wherever it is, the very next stop, it's done. Absolutely. It's done. So, but more than that, not only do I got that, you know, I got uh, a, a McDonald's apple pie box, total white trash. Got one of those at the drive through with a cup of coffee. Uh, I got, you know, the, you know, my other hobby and it smells. I mean, there's a lot of things going on, bro. I'm not expecting anybody to get in my vehicle right now, man. That's an invasion of privacy. And then I pull up and I'm like, I don't even think they have like I go to I see the garage where they're taking the valet, but it says do not enter. I'm like, oh, this is one of these joints where you're not even allowed to self park. So now I got to go over. You know how they had the residency next to the hotel? It was like mm-hmm. two. T- t- yeah, I had to go park over there and I had to open up the window, spray it out, do a dump, uh, throw my garbage out. I had to clean up my whole vehicle, then just do a loop right back around. And here's the worst, the most embarrassing, right? He goes to get my bag out, which I forgot to move because I had the bag in the back hatch. Now, to keep my roux clean every morning, I like to take the dog to run and throw him a ball, but I don't want him to dirty up the roof. So I got a dog cage, like a carry one in the back with a dirty dog bed. And the dog jumps in there. And then when we get home, he jumps out and goes, he just jumps in. He knows the rule. I'm pulling up valet. I find out this hotel used to be a Ritz Carlton. Guy's coming out with leather gloves and, and he's got to do a side move with my dog cage to pull the suitcase out. I'm like, oh, oh my God. God bro. People are pulling up in Porsches and his leather glove is touching a oh, dog cage. This is so bro. Yeah. And he's got this look. <laughs> I want to be like, guy, you know how close you were to moving a piss can? <laughs> You'd be grateful <laughs> it's only a dog fucking cage, guy. <laughs> so very embarrassing. You basically, you, you traveled five hours in an outhouse, bro. But yeah, hey, listen, guy, all, only the last two hours of bumper to bumper. But I'm, my point is sometimes. Sometimes you get used to a certain way of traveling that these these and it ended up being a beautiful hotel. These kind of five star joints. It's like I, sometimes it's not worth the pressure. Like, you know, you see, we're working out. Just were you there when my my top shirt came off? Did you see what I had underneath? 
uh, when we were in the gym. I was going with a Pete Corielli t-shirt uh, back in the day that I had made and the sleeves cut because that's what I work out at home. And I'm like, Holiday in, they're just grateful you're wearing a shirt. This place, <laughs> I'm looking around going, can I get kicked out of the gym for this shit? <laughs> <It's>, <clears throat> But on the flip side, I love going into the lobby and knowing everyone's going to be in loafers and night and no one's going to be at the front desk going, I didn't fucking eat that food. That didn't come. You know, there's no arguing over. My, it's just nice. But, you know, I guess I'm that guy. Bro, bro, this is it was a Marriott. This ain't this ain't no like high end joint. It's it's like a. I, you know, I know I'm trying to be nice like, about not, it. You, it used to be a rich call, you know. Used to be a Ritz Carlton, and they moved this to this Opus uh, Hotel. And I didn't want to stay out in Poughkeepsie because, uh, you know, I don't even know if they got running water in those hotels. So that's why we stayed where we stayed. And I just felt like if you needed to go out and get something to eat, it would be easier to do it there than if you were doing it in Poughkeepsie. But I want to get to the gym. So you come in to work out, right? I, I, I was working out with the, the trainer. I brought the trainer, Jack. Yeah, right? yeah, so you yeah. you walk in about noon you walk in and you're on the uh elliptical machine you're doing your thing and uh yeah. i got it i gotta tell you bro because i got a problem what? with you too <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm working out and every now so, and then i hear every now and then i hear and you I mean, is he singing out loud? <laughs> in the gym? That's called being in the zone. And you know when you, you know when you don't get in the zone? When you're walking on a treadmill like an 82-year-old lady. What is that? I told Jackie, I come home, I go, he strolled through the park on the fucking thing. And she goes, what well, was he sweating? I go, he was talking. He was talking to me. And she goes, uh, I talk to you sometimes. I go, I, I, I don't know. Maybe he might have did a whole cardio thing before. But I go, I don't know why this guy ain't going with a Pacino body. Just slim it down, petite. Like, just, bro, you, go Pacino. It'll be good for your back and your knees. Just wafy guy, wafy guy. <laughs> Hey, believe me, I would love to get a Pacino body, but my appetite is as such where it's <laughs> extremely difficult to get there. And the reason you look I'm walking good, but at you look dude, musk, you look like you know, like yeah, you've I gotta, been lifting, like you've been lifting. Yeah, I got I got to trim it down. And the reason I'm working out on a 2.5 on the treadmill is because <laughs> I still got this issue with the nerve damage that's running down my legs. Right, I can't, I can't, I can't run. So. I was just doing 10 minutes of warm up on the treadmill. And yeah, it is a grandma. It is a grandma. Uh, totally. It's embarrassing. But yeah. I don't want to I don't want to skip over what you just did is this this belting out tunes six to go six or seven times. I, don't uh -huh. know, I heard I heard I heard the singing and I, I was I, like, I, 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 I can't believe he's that guy. But yeah, yeah, I got I, I got a new method. I got a new method because uh um this is one channel on Sirius XM that it's called Pop Rocks. Okay. Now 90% of the time I can't take the tunes. But every once in a while they hit me with like a new tune that's like was off my radar. And when I hear it, I do a screenshot on my phone. And then when I'm working out, I look at the Phone and I go, what was the name? I said, let me Google that. And then I Google that tune and it gets me going, you know, like, uh, what's that one? Uh, don't steal my sunshine. Uh, and uh, I know it's up for me. Don't steal my sunshine. Getting into not too deep. Don't steal. You don't know that one, bro. Why aren't you on an elliptical? I mean, Jock, the trainer, seems like a fantastic guy with a wealth of knowledge in the training world. But yeah, it hurts I'd my legs. On an elliptical, that's nothing. It's air. Yeah. It's air, guy. No, yeah, no. It 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 hits my lower back, and God, uh, man, it, it, it sucks, not, bro. I, I know. I got. I got to get out of this thing. I got to get out of this. But thing. I understand it, why it, you're it, walking. It, 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 yeah, it actually feels better today for some reason. 
But there's a there's a sec there's a second uh, observation I made. Actually, I didn't I didn't see this, which I'm kind of pissed off. I didn't see it. Jock saw it. Oh, okay. <sighs> when you Welcome when down. you, nah, <laughs> I went to go get a towel. Yeah. Okay. And I felt like I walked into a dispensary. <laughs> 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 oh yeah when you left there was some german maid she couldn't speak english she was pointing at my bag acting like it was a brick of heroin i'm like lady i don't even know what the fuck you're saying but tone it down what you, you want to walk you through that no no i came <clears throat> back and i go my god it, it's, it, it smells like pot over there and he yeah. goes it does and he, he goes over there he gets like a water and he comes back and he goes he's got it laid out on the counter. I go, what? I go, he brought pot to the gym? <laughs> You're worried about getting kicked out because you got no sleeves? And you got marijuana? <laughs> you can't fucking breathe. <laughs> yeah, I'm worried about getting kicked out. <laughs> oh, shit. Let me, let me walk you through it. When I walk you through it, it makes way more sense than you think. Uh, oh, right. my God. All right. So, obviously, you know, I'm working with you. And when I'm working with somebody like, uh, when I'm not on my own, I'm gonna, I respect it in every capacity. So, I wasn't going to do it in the room or anything like that. I don't even do incidentals, guy, by the way, if you haven't checked. So, uh, I mean, I mean, I know. <laughs> I did stiff you for my meal the last night. I don't know if Lindsay told you. Uh, we all got chicken. I'm going on stage in 10 minutes. I get a text from her saying, yo, $26 for the chicken. And I go, well, when the, my meal plan money's in the car, Lindsay. And she goes, oh, okay. I go, I'll get it after. And then I'm, I go up to her. I go, tell him I'm stiffing him for the chicken. I'm not going to the car. I'm coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go see her next time. I'm gonna play it up. I go. Did he stiff us the twenty six dollars in the chicken this past? <laughs> Hard to do though, bro. Because like everybody else, seemingly in the whole world lately, she also listens to the cast. It's unbelievable. I wouldn't. <laughs> Biden probably listens to the shit in the Oval Office. Guy, you know, ten minute intervals, naps in between. Who we could. <laughs> so, uh, but. So, so, so explain, so take, like, take me through the okay, process. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, I like to do that when I work out sometimes. Right. So I'm like, all right, I, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go outside and then go back all the way upstairs and then go all the way back to the gym. So I grabbed a plastic bag I had for something else in my toiletries. I rolled one, which I don't normally do. I usually, usually do a one hip. I'm like, I can treat myself. It's legal in New York. I'm going to go across the street. I saw a little ledge. Have my coffee, let the sun hit me, and enjoy it like a gentleman. So that's what I did. I go across the street, ba ba boom, nice, feeling good. I wrap it up, I put it in my plastic. I, I don't have pockets really in my. Um, I usually have a hat when I put stuff in. So when I got to the gym, I had my key for the hotel, my water, my phone, my little rolled up joint in a plastic bag. And uh, I was about it. So I put it way up in the corner and I put like my phone on top of it, like to try and balance it. And I walked away. And then like, you know, when I went back to get my phone, I noticed like the bag kind of like opened itself up a little and it was kind of laying there. And it was just me, you and Jock in there. So I didn't think much about it. And then after you left, when I was on the phone with Jackie, when you left, she's talking to me. And, the, and like I said, this German woman came in to clean the place and, and I didn't really understand that. And she's pointing at it like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going, yeah, Jack, yeah, Jack. And I just grab it. I'm like, I just like like that to her. And I put it in my pocket and I walk out into the hall. Then I re-rolled it really tight and put it back in my pocket. And I came back in when I was off the phone with Jackie and I'm working out more. And then a guy in a suit, like a tie kind of came in and just did a look around. And then he left and I'm like, did he, did she tell him that it smelled in here or something? So he was coming to check, but it didn't smell anymore because I like re-secured it and all. But hey, a little, a little carelessness, a little, no biggie, no biggie. Bro, <laughs> I called the guy. 
<laughs> I believe you for a second. Oh. But you know, for the traveler out there, you always want to carry one of them tubes that you sometimes buy a joint in. So if you don't finish it, you put it right in there and no one will know. So that, yeah, I got a little, that's so funny, man. Oh, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we did the three, the three shows, six shows, three nights. Um, bro, I got to tell you, I think there was a lot of people from the cast there. Yeah, I, yeah, no, there definitely were. I mean, I heard a lot of PDs. I saw some T's. Um, but uh, I want to talk about your workout for a second because yeah, yeah okay, uh, go ahead. I, I, you, you do a lot of things that like the the rope. I've never done that before. We whipping the rope, right? Doing that, and I, I, I got to mix up my workout. I don't. I know, kind of doing like that kind of stuff would help, but. What's your take on some of the things like when you lay on your back and you're doing like curls on your back or you're whipping that rope? Would you feel comfortable doing that stuff alone without a train? No, no. It starts to get right. Like, I mean, you're in a hotel, you're whipping ropes. I'd be like, hey, the fuck? Because <laughs> you know why? I don't look like I should be whipping ropes alone. OK, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> if there's. If the if my trainer was whipping ropes around like that and I walked yeah. in, he's working out alone, I go, okay, this guy, obviously, he's built, he's stacked. He knows what he's doing with the ropes. I feel if I do the ropes with no trainer, people come in and go, Oh, what what did he what did his trainer tell him to do that when he's on the road? <laughs> you know, I, 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 I feel like it, it don't it don't go together, right? Even if even I'm if like, you were like mocky mock ripped. Yeah, then, but if I'm like a 50-year-old man doing ropes alone, come on, because I, 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 like you, have a routine that I've been doing for 32 years, all right? Right, right. Buy and try, buy and try, you know, back, these, <laughs> these this, this. Everything you see yeah. on Rocky, that's what we do, right? Except the one-handed push-ups. <laughs> yeah, all the basic <laughs> shit. All the basic. Just, <laughs> and the, basic workout. There's no resistance training. There's no core. There's no stabilization. There's nothing. There's just, give me the, give me the curl bar. I'll do, te- oh, by the way, right here. I, go, I go up to 10, right? If I'm alone, 10 is the number. With Jock, 20, 25, let's do 50, right? Bro, when I work out alone, what's your number? Do you hit 10 and then call it? With the reps? Yeah. When I do reps? If, yeah. If I, can do, if, I, if I can do 15, it's too light. I got to add more. If I can't do eight, it's too heavy. Anywhere between eight and 15, 10 to 12 is a nice place to land. But this is what I'm saying. You just told me that your doctor said you got some doctor who's ripped. And he's like, I never do reps over 10 with anything ever. And now you got Jock telling you to do 50. So, like, who you believe in? What's the story with that? You know what I'm saying? Well, well, well I don't want to bulk up. I'm trying to slim down. And, and, and the bulk you're seeing is not necessarily muscle. It's fucking pasta. So, <laughs> I got... No, man. You're not you're not in bad shape at all, no, bro. No, but that's I, well, funny. But I I need I need I need to get back to uh uh movie shape. I was about twelve right. pounds lighter than I am now. That's what I'm trying to achieve. It just this last I'd say six weeks, I've been on a bender with food and booze. So right. now I'm trying to kind of come out of that fog. Do you have a Which start I, date state date for anything other than your stand up special? Do you have any start date for sh- Anything you're filming yet? Because that's no. until until, yeah, you, until well, that's locked in. You know that that's when you go. Okay, I have till that date to be this thin. Well, it was the special, which is this Saturday, and pff, what I are you talking up. about, dude? You are you thin? You are not. I'm just saying well, you want to okay, be listen. petite guy. You want to be Pacino petite, I, panic and needle Paul. No, I don't. Yeah, no, I don't want to be Pacino. <laughs> I, let, 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 let's say. A McConaughey, Brad Pitt kind of slim look like that. You got that build. Uh, You're slim. You don't. Uh, you don't have any like meat on your bones. It's just slim. You know. You're like 
five pounds yeah. away from looking like a heroin addict, right? Uh, I mean, look. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Well, no, I guess it is a little bit inherent, you know? I'm way taller than you, too, though. There's that. Bro, let's not. Let's not. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I, I, By the way, no, McConaughey's. No, yeah. McConaughey's, like, as skinny as, uh, well, he's muscular now. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I th- no. bro, I used to be that skinny. I I got pictures when I was in my early twenties. I was resting at one seventy one, right? I was yeah. a slim machine. I'm not even then. talking about. I'm talking, literally, petite, Jared Leto, petite, Pacino, petite, Michael J. Fox, like this. Like what? I'm telling you, it plays well on screen, bro. It plays well on screen. They, I'm not, not even looking. that guy. I, I don't even have that body type. My bone structure is not even going to get me there. I got wide shoulders. There's no way I'm getting down to 151. Michael J. Fox family dies. Come on. <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> so, bro, I wore, this is how I knew I was getting fat. I did that uh, 9-11 memorial, which we'll get into. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And I, I put a, I put the suit jacket on at home prior to going to New York for this thing. And I put it on and I had a t-shirt on underneath. I said, okay, this this it's not not that tight. I got to the gig, right? And I had a button up shirt. I put the I put the jacket on. I felt like the incredible Hulk. One one move and the back would have split open, right? I was planning on performing with the thing buttoned. Bro, they took a picture of me. I didn't even recognize myself. I looked like I was busting out of the suit. You came out. Forget forget button it. You had it over your shoulder like Gene Kelly fucking coming out. Not even wearing it. You just put it right on the mic stand. <laughs> Bro, so, I, had the har- I had the harness shirt on. And it, it was fucking. It wasn't even working. <laughs> I couldn't even get my legs into the harness. So wait, and how 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 past did this fit? How long ago did this fit? Three months. Three months so, ago, I bought it. And I put, what on, you, what I put we, on 12, 12 pounds. I put on twelve pounds in three months. What was it these parties you were throwing? These these little sw- sw- dinner parties where you like to do stuff. Well, how how does it happen so fast, bro? I mean, it's like you get. It's like uh, a movie part. Weight gain for a movie part. Weight gain quick, uh, bro, I, bro. I could pack it on real quick. It happened. I, I'll tell you when it happened exactly. I went to North Carolina for five nights. Uh, right? Right. I had had steak, wine, the whole thing. You know. Then I came back. We did three nights in uh, Santa Barbara. Same thing. And then Lana and I went to Las Vegas one night, and then Napa Valley for three nights. And that's what did me in that whole run. Yeah, I packed it on. I packed it on, and now I'm trying to shred it, shred it off, and uh, it's tough. Because, because listen, I've seen photos, by the way, recently of Lana looking fantastic. So clearly, you guys both didn't gain 12 pounds during that run. But, uh, but you can't do cardio. That's the problem right now. So anything yeah, well, you eat, you can't really burn it off, right? Yeah, that's that, true. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's yeah. I mean, you know, what are you going to not eat that shit the rest of your life? That's ridiculous. I know. I know. It's a catch 22. It's just I just wish I had more of a grasp on. I can't help it, bro. I'm sorry. When I get around food and I'm making food and I'm making steak and the potato, this and that, the wine, it's just it's just it's fun. But then again, afterwards, it's like, you know, you're busting out of your suit. At the at the nine eleven thing, I swear to God, I came out there and I, I was like, I, I looked unrecognizable in this photo. Now I, you I, did you I gotta you did it. stand up at that thing, right? Yeah, I did. Uh, I did a seven minute set. Let me, let me walk you through this. I told you a little bit about this over the weekend, but and let, Lindsay, let me, let me clue. Well, just a one brief thing, she mentioned that you did it as like a free gesture to them. You didn't even get paid to do it. Yeah, I, I donated my time, which. Wow. You know, nice. 9-11 <clears throat> for me, even though, you know, obviously not a New Yorker, but, you know, everybody in the United States was greatly affected by that event. Of course. And when I went down, 
down there in March to kind of tour the museum and see, you know, all these <coughs> different things they had on display was was gut wrenching. So when the, the museum reached out to me uh, after I went there and said, hey, would you like to, you know, host this event to dinner? Uh, I said, absolutely. So now here, here's the problem. Uh, I get there and it's kind of like, you know, Michael Bloomberg is there, who is the chairman of the, the, wow. the museum. Damn, oh, and bro. I'm, and, I'm, and I'm sitting at his table. So what they want me to do is perform a seven minute set and then sit down and eat at his table with people I don't know. Okay, now. Right. And normally, it's no, normally, <laughs> normally, it's like I do a corporate, yeah, I do a corporate gig. I often get, hey, he could eat with us and then go up. You know, I don't <laughs> like to like eat or, or co-mingle with the party that I'm performing for just because I can't be sitting there going, yeah, no, I got a sister and a mother and a father. Excuse me. I got to go do it out. You know, it just, it don't work. It don't work. I agree. I agree. Rather be in my own space. So I get out there. You ever do a gig where you're like, ah, what am I going to open with? Like not necessarily a club gig. It's more of like a corporate gig or a private event where you're like, how am I going to like weave myself into the fabric of the event? Right. So absolutely. Yeah. They have a six minute nine eleven video that goes on before me with testimonials from, you know, uh, families who lost loved ones in the towers. And, the, and, and there's a video and you see the towers and you see the families. And all while this is going on, there's a choir on stage singing to the video. And it's very, it's very emotional, right? So, and then. You think you're a magician? I mean, this is insane. I mean, I, I, this is like someone trying to do five minutes at my dad's funeral. I mean, yeah. it's like I, you so, should go. Be, I, I don't know, man. It's got to be some separation. I mean, as well, even well, even if they do go from sadness to you, what an emotional roller coaster. OK, so this happens at every one of these events. The comedian always goes on after the sad video. That's uh, every gig I've ever done like this. It's like, we're going to have the video and then you're going to come on. Right. And I'm going to come on and then people are crying and I'm like, Hey, you know, so I'm like, you're going to cheer everyone up. <laughs> so I go on and bro, you, you ever go on stage and you know, it, it's not part of the routine. It's just kind of off the cuff, but I go, What's going on, everybody? Good to be here. Um, I told myself I wasn't going to watch that video, right? And I got an energy in the crowd like, why wouldn't you watch that video, right? Like, I, I got, and I got in my head, I go, oh, fuck. Maybe they think that I think this was a conspiracy. You know, like, oh, that's where I go yeah. in my head, right? You're in the Charlie Sheen camp. I <laughs> 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 thought it was... Uh, Explosives, one at a time. Here we go. All right, continue, Mister Q and on. <laughs> right, that's what they're thinking of you. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Because I got like, it, it wasn't a reaction; it was a silence that was that that ran through my body. And I go, no, but I I I couldn't help it, so I I watched it, and I I knew I should. I was like rambling. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> what, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm I'm digging a hole, bro. It's a grave. It's a grave. You only right have seven minutes. One seventh of your set is oh. Rev oh. oh man. Oh. So I go into this whole routine about, you know, my wife being Jew. I start with the Jewish stuff, right? Yeah. And and I asked if there's a lot any Jewish people in the crowd. And I think a good 60% were Jewish. So I'm like, oh, okay, they'll, they'll Michael they'll Bloomberg, this. bro. He's like the, the, the most famous Jew in America is in the crowd. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I wanted to see who else was there. And it was a very kind of upper class white, um, just very white, 
right? right. Yeah. Very like a <laughs> that kind of oh that god, kinda white. yeah. Could yeah, have been having the know, same party on a lawn in the Hamptons, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, oh, we're all taking a break. Oh, I'm just, I'm just drinking tea. You got something t- totally different. <laughs> totally yeah, different. no. I... <laughs> Hold on, my mom, my mom just texted. <laughs> Do we got any more mom texts, man? <laughs> no, no. Oh, I love them. <laughs> no concern no, about me, though. I do this Jewish stuff. It don't go over as good as I thought it was going to go over, right? So I'm not even out of the hole yet. I'm three and a half minutes into the set. I'm 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 getting like laughs, but like from people who <laughs> like you ever get laughs from people who don't even care, you know, like who who hears them laugh, you know. This this was a type of crowd where everybody's looking around the room to see who's laughing so they could laugh, you know. Yeah, it was yeah. one of those one of those events. No one wanted to like overtly laugh because they would have pigeonholed them into you think that's funny you know like one one of those crowds right and also bro you said you're three and a half minutes in so that means they're four minutes past seeing crying families on a video so there's probably this <laughs> feeling of if i laugh are they gonna think she was laughing right after the video and like people yeah. go yeah because right after the video a famous comedian was on that's why <laughs> <laughs> you know shit it's crazy <laughs> so but wasn't there was this. there at least a party was there at least a little party up there in your head that feels any less stressed because it is for free or no like if you were getting like your going rate would you be like oh a double sorry or no that doesn't even equate the money or the no money doesn't even equate into this feeling i i, I every time i go on right. stage rather whether it's for free or for money I want, I'm doing the same. I'm giving exactly. the same amount of effort. It's not. It's you not, hear this, it's young like comedians? Going, young comedians yeah. that listen to this cast. This is you hear that right there. No matter how you feel about the money, once you're up there, it's out the that's door. That's it. I didn't like. I didn't. I didn't even think about that. It didn't even f- come in my mind at all. All I knew was three and a half minutes, and I'm dying, dying. <sighs> so. Yeah. I uh, I do another bit that's a little bit, you know, I don't want to say out of bounds, but it, it could be con- misconstrued as, oh, why are you, pit, you know, pointing out this specific group of people? Basically, I did a set now, making fun of cultures. Now, when right? you when you is this did you plan on doing this or is this one of these things where you just ended up sliding over into this bit and you go and, and a party is like, oh, why am I doing this? Why did I choose this? Like. Or was this all totally pre-planned? No, like, I, go. I, I go, I'm going to do the, the, my wife and I go out to a restaurant chunk. There's couples here. They could relate. My wife's right. Jewish. There's a lot of Jewish people here. I thought it was a perfect uh, content for the group. But it went sideways from the beginning. And I couldn't get them back. But I did call them out at the end saying they should loosen up and, you know, like, yeah, I, I did some kind of like calling out the elephant in the room and that they laughed at. They kind of were laughing yeah. at themselves after I kind of called them out. Anyway, it wasn't my best set. Oh, oh, here's another thing. The guy goes, listen, are you going to mention that you were here because we have photos of you when you visited the museum? Are you going to mention that at the end of your set? I go, listen, you know, if I start getting into that, I only got seven minutes. If I start talking about my visit, that's going to bring me down to five. It's not a lot of time. It's like, why even have me here? So I said, how how strict are you on the seven? Can I do the seven comedy and then stretch it to two to nine and have two minutes of me talking about the, the you know, my, my visit? No. He goes, fine. You can do that. No problem. I do the seven, and then I get into my visit, and I can't even talk about the visit because in my head I'm going, I die, I just died oh. on the stage, <laughs> and I'm and I'm looking back at the screen, screen, going, I came here in March, you know, and uh, it really um, affected me in a way where when they asked me, like you know, I wasn't even there because I was just I was going. I was going, oh, oh my God, I got, oh, I, I, in my head, I go, I got to go eat with these people now. 
I gotta go to that. <laughs> you were more affected by a bad set than you were by your visit to the damn tribute thing all over the back when you went to see that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I can't believe oh, you didn't break shit. character all together and just be like hey people I'm doing this for free and then I'm gonna eat with some of you so let's all meet me halfway alright alright I mean jeez oh what's the, why didn't you ask oh, oh, I better watch what I say oh, that, would been, that would have been an edit <laughs> oh, oh, oh god. still a nice thing that you did did you get to meet Bloomberg by any chance and who else was there like that uh, <laughs> Bro, let's not, did you just go to a hot did you go to a hot dog stand? What the hell are you? Is that a thermos? Yeah. White thermos. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought that was like a styrofoam cup, man. I thought, geez, oh, oh no, no, no. Who do you go get some hot dogs and fries? Um so now I go sit down. And uh Oh my god, bro, this is torture. Torture. To, I mean, I'm sure you didn't do nearly as bad as you think you did, but knowing this is how you feel to now have to go sit with them. Did you have a wingman? Just me. Or someone sit me. I just show. <laughs> so, so this is this is the worst thing of it of it all. After I get off, there's somebody else speaking, and then they introduce introduce someone. And in the in the between the introduction, they told me, "Okay, go to your seat now." And I am snaking through tables to get to the it's the the center table in the middle of the room, and I got to snake through a bunch of tables to get there while the people are looking at me. So I could just in my head, I, I could just hear, hear them whisper, "Oh my God, he's gonna he's gonna go eat with the people after that." <laughs> When you were going to your table, was some people making eye contact, going, great job, so funny. Or, I mean, when was the last time, seriously, considering where you are, you're creative, you staked around tables and nobody, like, you know, stopped to say, hey, can I get a photo? Can I, you know, like, what are you, at a wedding in 1985? What the fuck? Uh, oh, bro. Uh, bro, I... <laughs> The the bus boy was getting more more uh more call overs than I was. <laughs> uh, what happened when you when you sat down? Did they go? So like, a guy at like the my people. table, the guy at my table who I don't know. Once right. I got there, he raises his hand and he points to my seat. Like, oh wow, okay. So I sit down. I got a nameplate, my name, uh -huh. and I start talking to this guy. Nice guy, older guy, probably in his early seventies, and uh, he's got a hearing aid. Now, I want to ask you something on the hearing aid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you see somebody with a hearing aid, are you now talking louder? Are you pronouncing your words a lot clearer, or do you just go, "Man, this guy's got a hearing aid. He's got to be picking this up." No, my father-in-law has one now, and whenever I see it in, I come slower and clearer and harder louder like i'm like how you doing dad oh well mike how you doing good to see you you have a good like that so okay but then sometimes he yells at me to say that's what i have it so you, you don't have to do that yeah so what i'm what i guess what i'm asking is and you may have just answered this when somebody's got a hearing aid on do they got it amped up to where they would be able to hear if they didn't have a hearing problem. Because I think I the know. connotation I is... All I know is I see someone with a hearing aid guy and I'm like, you got one foot in the hearing guy. Yeah, you're already. I mean, if I have a hearing aid, you don't want to hang out with me anymore, bro. I totally get it, guy. I totally get it. I could, I could <laughs> die in the middle of our hang. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 listen, listen. The hearing aid, the way they make them now, right. are invisible, right? Like you don't even see it. My dad, my dad had a hearing aid, right? He, I'm he gonna need one. one, and I know my yeah. Your dad had a big one, bro. You you don't have to say now that my now that I just told you my dad has a hearing aid. You don't have to make up for what you just said 
about no, one I'm making- foot in the grave with, with you saying that you're going to get one, okay? <laughs> That, that's why I said that. I had nothing to do with your dad. I just feel like everybody, I, I feel like we got 18 year old listeners with a hearing aid going, I fucking hate Pete Corielli now. <laughs> <laughs> the hearing aid this guy had on. And I, I don't know, man. I don't know his hearing issues or whatnot, but the hearing aid he had on had one of those like, like little tubes. You know, one of the, you could see, yeah. you know, it looked like the wire was wrapped in a, a little see-through tube. You ever see it? You almost look like a Secret yeah. Service agent, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's how, a, that's you really can't hear when you need one of those. You can't even be discreet with the little one that you can't see. I need the big mama. Oh, okay. So you think that the hearing is so bad that right. they said, Listen, we do make invisible ones, but the type of hearing problem you got, we need to really fucking get this signal from. Uh, yeah, I mean, f- you need a wolf direct right above your earlobe. <laughs> 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 totally, bro. If you want to really be able to hear, you know, your days of picking up women are over. Uh, you know, okay. but you'll be able to hear them say no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> bro, why am I saying this shit, dude? What's going on? This phone no, bringing just, me down. We're just, we're just, we're just, we're just uh, talking about. It. So, but again, when I'm talking to him, he's kind of leaning in, you know. So he, he not not oh, drastically, yeah. but I, I do see a, like a little leaning. So my question to you is like, if you got a hearing aid and you're still leaning in, don't you go back to the hearing aid guy and go, listen, get this thing up to where I don't need to like. Lean in, and he, you know, like, right. why, why, why to lean in if you got the aid? That's all I'm trying to figure well, out. And I gotta ask my dad I, this at the hearing. Look, everyone at this thing you're at has bread. <clears throat> it was obviously it's a it's a upscale sort of yeah, a yeah. thing. This guy probably has the best. I bet the doctor would say to him, "Bro, up until 1987, you would be legally deaf." <laughs> You're lucky we even got anything that we could strap to your ear. That with that and a lean in, you can make out what the person's saying to you. Other than that, you'd be doing this guy. You wouldn't even be able to eat dinner. You'd be too able to sign it all over. So be grateful. Now, I mean, under the circumstances, I thought you'd say there was a part of you that saw this uh, double A battery hanging over the earlobe and think to yourself, this guy didn't hear any of my set. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eat dinner with him. (laughs) That's why he's talking to me. (laughs) That's good. (laughs) Oh, shit. Oh, Oh, God. Shit. Now, but when you got to the table, like, even like a long time ago, a time I was lucky enough to have Billy eat dinner with Billy Joel, when everyone sat down and they all just start talking, I even said, I don't mean to be rude, folks, but can can I just say, Billy, great show. You know, and everyone goes, oh, yeah, geez. Did they even give you at your table where you sat that little like nice job or or cool, like even say something to you? Or like, did they just literally act like you're Bill, Nancy's husband, and you got there late? The reaction I got at the table is if I went to the bathroom and came back. Oh. Bro, you're fucking one of the biggest comedy stars on the planet. I mean, holy shit. I'm saying that, though. This backwards, backwards, no, man. Listen, that, that's so funny to me, man. When I, I mean, when I sat, when I sat down, immediately got in a conversation with this guy. Mm-hmm. And then he says his wife is next to me. So I'm sitting in between him and his wife. So I go, I go, oh, man, you here, you know, sit next to your wife. I don't, I don't know why he, he goes, don't worry about it. I'm taking her home. You know, like telling me like, don't, don't worry about it. We're, you got no shot. If you think you're going to, you know, <laughs> you, Oh my, yeah. Yeah. He's he, he looking at me like you're, you're a clown. Oh, I, see now I own, I own shit, you know, <laughs> That almost so, would make me make you wanna like. Well, now now I am gonna. Uh, <laughs> sure, 
sure she'd like to make love to somebody without having to worry about an earpiece landing on the bridge of a nose <laughs> if you thrust too hard. I mean, oh boy. <clears throat> was everyone in tuxedos, by the way? It was a, not black tie, but it was a dressed up affair. Everybody was dressed up, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting there and, uh, uh, man, my fucking harness is tight at this point, right? It's, yeah, it's, yeah. uh, it's it's wrapped around my legs. I think one of the one of the straps on my 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 shirt harness, like wrapped around my nut during this thing, and uh, I couldn't, you know, like I couldn't pick it out of there, <laughs> right? I know so, what you're saying. Yeah. So it was, just needs to so just if I could just move it a little left, this <laughs> night will be a lot. Yeah. But once you, that harness, you can't move it once. You know, once it gets locked in, it's strapped to oh. your shirt. So it's not like you're sitting down. You yeah. can't, like, snap it. It's coming right back to where it landed. Well, so, yeah. Oh, man. <sighs> I'm talking to the girl. And look, get, don't get me wrong. These are nice people. All right? I'm not making right. fun of the people. I'm just making fun of the situation. Uh, Very nice. Very pleasant. I start talking about my kids and this woman's. And I go, yeah, he's really a boy. He's in the, like trains and trucks. She's like, oh, he's in the trains. And she calls her husband. She's like, show him your trains, right? This guy whips out his cell phone. He starts showing me trains, which I think are real. I, I, he's showing me trains passing by one another. And then he pans out on the phone. This guy's got a full train set in his basement oh, yeah. all right it's going through my it's going through mountains it passes a mcdonald's it's you right. know, it's got a kfc it's a whole thing smoke coming out of the train yeah set. yeah Jeez. i know some men get into that man i knew another guy whose dad did that built the whole thing in the basement man this guy didn't build it what do you mean i go how, I, I go how long did it take you to do this he goes take me he goes i got a train i got a train guy i came in and built it <laughs> what <laughs> that's that's what you point. do that's like making a model that what then what's his job then <clears throat> well here's my question if you got a train set like that in your basement right 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 do you just go down there at night and put it on and watch the trains go by What's the if you didn't if you didn't build it, right? What's the enjoyment out of I, it? I I I feel like when when I saw my friends in his basement and he goes, my dad keeps making it bigger and bigger because the enjoyment I get that part as a man. It's like making model doing modeling work and men like that. And every time my friend's dad probably stopped adding another town, and then he turned the train on. He probably went, oh, right, I'm not 10. So he turned the fucking train off and built more towns. <laughs> but your guy goes right to the 10 part. You know what I'm saying? He goes, does he wear a, a hat like Richie Rich's dad and silver spoons from an anywhere to fuck? Like, bro, I, I'm enjoying putting this foam up. It's like at night I put on the uh, radio and I put up the foam, you know? It's like uh, modeling. But if, if, if I put it up, you know, did that play a game with it? That's what, how, what, yeah. so what do you even say to that, bro? What are we dealing with? You got a guy who can't hear to the left, a guy who <laughs> wants to play with toys to the right. <laughs> so I go, that's what? cool. Da, 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 da. So then one of the ladies at the table goes, What does the guy do? I don't even, I didn't even ask. No, no, I mean, with the trains, if he didn't make them. He shows people at dinners on his phone. I don't. I, I don't know. Oh, I don't so know what he, the hell he does. He he just drives him around. I guess. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if he's got grandkids. I don't know. I could see you got grandkids that come over. Oh my god! Look at the trains. But I don't know. Maybe this guy goes downstairs, has a scotch, and watches the shit go around his head. I I, I don't know. Nah, what bro. He does. Now you, you, listen. Now you're telling me that's a different game. Now I'm thinking I go down. I got a little of my hobby. Maybe I got a cold beer, and in that guy's case, a scotch. 
could be kind of medicinal. You got the fucking diesel coming around this way, and you got the Amtrak train. Now you know you got to make stop, but it's going to be a problem with the diesel. Ah, uh, you know. Well, you know, you bring up a good point here because if he's got a remote control on this thing, yeah, and he could <clears throat> he could speed it up and slow it down and whip them around the track. Yeah, I could see that being a little interactive and 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 having some enjoyment out of that. But if you just yeah. put the thing on and it goes, what's the point? That's yeah, yeah. I know. I agree. I agree. But if you're doing the whole thing where I'm going to make every stop, you have a little mic next stop, whatever town, you know. I don't know. Yeah, I guess it takes all kinds, bro. <laughs> right? Seriously, I don't know so, what my hobby is going to be if I get old. What's yours? Do you have any clue? Oh. <laughs> You got me, man. You know what? You know what I want to do, which I'm kind of into now, and I'm just scratching the surface, is I really want to start cooking, getting really into cooking. Yeah. My next yeah. my next goal and um, is pizza making. And on Netflix right now, Chef's Table is airing six different uh, pizza chefs, and one of them is Chris Bianco, who I had the... Um, pleasure of tasting his pizza in arizona have you ever went, went to uh, bianco's in, in uh, arizona for pizza no okay gotta go watch this guy's netflix special he's he just opened a pizzeria here in downtown los angeles which i'm gonna take my father to next week i gotta start making pizza dough from scratch as well as the tomato sauce so that's that's my next goal so my hobby to answer your question is going to be cooking. Thank I'm you. not a type of guy that does model trains, model right. air crane, n- none of that shit. I can't. I, it's uh, my brain don't work like that. I want to yeah. do cooking, and if I take cooking up and become good at it, you think the suit didn't fit at the memorial thing? Jesus Christ! Yeah. I'm going to be about two <laughs> two fifty, two seventy at seventy three years old. Nice man. Nice. So, Why not? <clears throat> another guy at the table. I found out through someone else at the table was involved yeah. in in the Bin Laden uh, takedown. Like he he's the guy that orchestrated the the seals or whatever in the Bin Laden thing. Now this is a guy I wanted to get he I wanted to get over to him and start chirping yeah. his ear. Oh my god, he wasn't oh, at your boy. table. He was at my table, but he was like four people away. Oh, you know, I got next. I got next to train set guy. And I want to talk about like what happened when the helicopter went into the yard. Where were you at? You know, yeah. And I don't yeah, or, or what? What? You know, like what did they find in there? I mean, I'm was sure he one of the guys there. that went in? I don't know. I don't know. He was associated with it. I don't know if he was in the in the control room you know, barking out commands right. or he was with those guys. He was older. So I don't think he, I don't think wow. he was on the mission. He might've been just uh chirping the commands. Anyway, these are the type of people that was at this party. So, um, that was that. And then, uh, and then I came to, to Poughkeepsie with you. Now what, um, speaking of the Navy, I saw Top Gun. I saw your I, I, I saw your text. Um, leads me to believe I know how you felt about the flick, but I'm dying to hear the review. I wish the whole movie took place in the airplane. Couldn't agree more. All right, I agree right. with that. Even the love, even the love interest, I wouldn't have even mind her in the back of the airplane, and they're just talking <laughs> while while he's flying, right? <laughs> yeah yeah uh, the great. last the last 20 minutes i'd have to say is probably the best 20 minutes i've ever seen in the movie the All last right. 20 minutes w- when they're when they're going to hit that target and then mm-hmm. it, he gets out and then it the he, the, the, he crashes he ejects he sees the guy they get the nah let me write you, you ain't on board. I, I mean, I, no, no, you know, I mean, best 20 minutes ever. You see the guy you eject and the guy's right there, you know? Yeah, he had a run. He well, had a run I, to go see him. It, was a, it was a classic Tom Cruise run, bro. 
Uh, that that's true. I I got I, I got listen. I told you my kid was there. She got sick. I got to give it a rewatch. I I wasn't, uh, you know, top twenty. My best moment ever. I, I can't believe the comment, bro. It's 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 shaking me a little bit. The be, yeah, no, no, and, and the, the best. And the Godfather wasn't 20 minutes. I'm talking the last 20 minutes of this movie. Was I was the on the 20? edge of my I was on the how edge about, of my seat the whole time. How about first 20 minutes of saving Private Ryan? Coming in on the boats to the water with the guns, trying to take Normandy. Yeah, that was but that was more in your face. That wasn't really suspense. <clears throat> this was suspense, man. I thought he was going to die. All right. Tom it's Hanks, I knew, wasn't going to die in it. But what about the stuff like when his credit card wasn't accepted? That didn't bother you a little bit? I saw that, and I said, when's he getting in the plane? All right. right that's all I said. What, 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 anything I saw that was like his, his, when he goes, talk, go ahead. When his when he saw Goose's son playing goodness gracious great balls of fire, that would be the equivalent of me, like me and you were like cops or something, and I was maybe responsible if you felt that way. Some people about you dying, and then I see your son, and I see Caruso in a mirror going, "Nobody died." I'd be like, "Oh my guy's trying. He's trying to be his dad. I got. I got to talk to him. I got to sit him down. He's trying to be his dad." <laughs> He's not his dad. He's his own person. <laughs> I mean, it was weird, bro. The same song, the same shirt. Oh, and Goose's son happens to be the best fighter pilot in the world. And the lady happens to buy the bar and come home. And Oh, boy. Just get in the plane and go shoot some. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I got to give it a rewatch because you sent out a text to me and Watt right afterwards that said, I, I, I got to get a motorcycle. Oh, bro. The motorcycle scene when he's alongside the jet on the runway. And that hair don't okay. move, man. That, 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 that hair. If I, he looks if I great. Go time time to time. It's, it's unbelievable. That, that hair. If I did the same thing on a motorcycle and went 100 miles on a motorcycle with my hair, right? And, and then I stopped. I have three quarters of my hair left. <laughs> my hair would fly off. This guy, I don't know what's keeping his hair in. <laughs> but when he got off, the, it just, Scientology it just, keeps your hair in, guy. <laughs> it's good for the roots. It's good for the roots. I'm telling you, man. You go to a Scientology church and your hair just starts to scalp softens, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I got to give it a rewatch. Tommy C. Give, baby it, give it a rewatch. Screen. Give it a rewatch. It's on Amazon. I'll give you another recommendation. You got to see Terminal List with Chris Pratt. I'm in on that, too. That's another uh, military movie. I'm in. I'm in. I'm into like revenge killing in movies where something happens to someone and this guy goes out and does revenge shit. Totally oh. into that. Um, But speaking of traveling. Last night you left the show, right? To yeah. drive home. Yeah. Five hours? Five hours. Last show I was my least good performance. I didn't I, I didn't want to close on the same thing every time. And um little flag performance up front too. I felt uh same sort of thing a little bit when they were doing that nine eleven ceremony up front. That Oh, uh, what'd they do? I didn't I was downstairs. I didn't even see it. Oh, they had flags and um <clears throat> that was funny because they wanted to do the Pledge of Allegiance. And Lindsay yeah, yeah, goes, yeah. <laughs> she, she goes, I don't know about that. And she said, Sebastian said it was okay, but I don't know. If, I, I still don't think we should. And I'm like, hey, it ain't my call. But so I didn't say anything, but I go, but it, uh, it does seem a little Kim Young un esque. <laughs> 3,500 3, people. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Could be people visiting from France and shit, you know? <laughs> well, but yeah, no, it was well, a 9 11 I mean, ceremony. But yeah, it was good. Still, all your crowds okay. are so freaking great, man. They're like just ready to go. Awesome people. It was a lot of fun. And I mean, it's fun to watch your your set is rocking. The show's uh, 
you know, the whole production is like so much going on, man. It's pretty cool. Well, thanks. I appreciate you guys coming out. I think everybody really. Uh, no, thanks for having me, man. You surprise, me? It was surprise fun. and. But I gotta say, dude, you know, I hear these stories sometimes about uh, when, when other guys like Pat opens for you. You know, you end up having dinner together with. I, I think it was some famous athlete. Or you go to this, you go to that. I mean, we nothing. I I, I thought we'd be doing a tour of West Point on Saturday. I I don't even said nothing. After I get off stage. I'm starving, so I'm like, I'm going to go to his room. He's got to have food in it. It's like a fucking half of an avocado and uh, halls. <laughs> I'm like, I told you, you got off. I go, uh, prisoners have more shit in their cell than you have in your green room, guy. I'm, I'm like, you got to go to the commissary and get some shit. Was, holy shit. What are you doing in between shows? Fucking sit-ups and push-ups on the door frame? <laughs> Baron. No, you know, luckily, his, uh, she, Lindsay put some blue moons in my fridge. Thank God. I mean, there is nothing oh. down there. <laughs> <laughs> if I have it, I'll eat it. So I, I just say, just give me some turkey and some and bananas, bro. Yeah, it's it's is I'm rationing down there. I I, I don't, uh, yeah. I, don't, I can't eat a lot. But uh, but did, did did you go straight home? Full blown five hours, no stop, no nothing. Yeah, and you know what's so crazy? I backed the ruin because I drove. We were, Every time for the listeners, we had about an hour drive each way to the gig. So the last day of the gig, I drove myself. Um, and then I parked. Where they had me park was on the sidewalk right in front of the semi-tractor trailer that brings all your, your stage stuff in. And when I parked, it was very noisy and stuff. And I, I turned the car off and I go inside. It's 4 o'clock. Uh, do the first show, blah, blah, blah. It's now 10 to 8, right? And the guy who owned, who has the semi, he comes in. He's like, it's your car in front of me, right? And I go, yeah. He goes, it's running. I'm like, what? I left that <laughs> shit running for three hours and 50 minutes, man. Just running. Luckily, there was a cop for the show parked right next to my car. Otherwise, that shit would be in Newark by now. <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh, oh my shit. god! <laughs> oh yeah, I, man, I, I heard that. that out. I thought they, I, I thought they were screwing around with you when they said your car was running. I thought they were playing a joke on you, but I guess it was right. true. I always feel like when you have your own car at a gig, I don't. It's not a true gig. A true gig is I got a ride there. I do it. I'm out yeah. the back with a ride. I mean, yeah. You ever get in your car and like? Seeing people from the show as you're fucking driving out there next to you at a red light, you're like, oh God, this is so pedestrian. <laughs> it's so embarrassing, right? They think I'm in a helicopter, not waving to them from the fucking right lane. <laughs> They're like, no, Pete, we don't think you're in a helicopter, brother. <laughs> oh, but yeah, you know, and oh, I was telling God. Jackie too, because even Jackie was like, be careful. And a couple of the people that work for you, like, wow, you're going to go five hours. And then I go, even Sebastian, which was very nice of you. I go right before he goes on stage. It's like, if you get tired, pull over. I'm like, it's five hours, baby. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bro. Yeah, so. God forbid if you, God forbid if you would have pulled a, uh, an anti Diane. I, oh, I, 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 I wanted to be, I wanted to be the one to, to at least put that in your ear. That's so crazy. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know, the Taconic Highway is a famous documentary on Netflix called What's Wrong with Aunt Diane? And it's about this yeah. tragic accident where a woman drove the wrong way. Very many, a lot of people got killed. But that Taconic Highway now, because of that documentary and that accident, it's like what what Jaws was to the water with sharks, you know? Like, Jackie, when I came home, she goes, because she, uh, I don't know if Lana does this too. Jackie watches where I am on the cell, like when I'm driving home. I'll be like, I'm passing Binghamton. Yeah, I know. I see you. That's, I don't know if I feel about that. But she goes, <laughs> she goes, the other night, she goes, I see you guys are on the Taconic. And I'm like, I know. I mentioned it to Sebastian. And we were both like, whoa. Well, actually, it's a, it's a frightening highway. I mean, it is. Even at 55 miles an hour around those curves, you know, we saw a few deer, or you did, and, uh, you know, one yeah. one deer out there, you're done. Yeah, and people drive like nuts out there, so, yeah. and if you don't go fast, it comes in, yeah, so it does get crazy. But, yeah, that was a lot of fun, man. I mean, I know we didn't do much when we yeah, got back, times. but we went, on, 
It was good, yeah, definitely. Good so, times, good what times else, in Poughkeepsie. No, that's it, bro. We're uh, we're wrapping this one up. Uh, we're wrapping up. We got another. We got another one to do. We got to do it. We got to do an outfit change. I got to go to the bathroom, yeah. and right. uh, and we'll see you guys next week. This is the Pete and Sebastian show. Thanks for tuning in again. We are on Patreon. Five bucks a month, you get a whole lot more than what you're getting here. Uh, Absolutely. And uh, there's something I want to talk to you about. Get the Patreon, people. If you don't have it, you got to get it. There's things going on over there, man. I mean, yeah, well, you don't I, have I, it, I, but you'll, you'll enjoy it. No, you do. It. I mean, yeah. you, you, do. you do. You do. You do. You do. No, you, you, you do. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week. Take care.